Infinite Talk was only released a few days ago. And now the competing WAN 2.2 speech-to-video model has already been released. They claim their new S2V model produces high-quality videos, generates natural facial expressions and body movements, supports both full-body and half-body characters, and handles dialogue and singing at a professional level. All sounds very impressive, but does it really live up to these bold claims? Let's take a quick look at a couple of their official examples, which I presume are the best of their video generation results. The real test, as usual though, will come from running generations for ourselves. Listen, Morty, I hate to break it to you, but what people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. A hundred miles, a hundred miles. The sun sinks low behind the hill. The air turns cold, but I feel the chill. In this video, we'll take a look at a couple of video generations that I actually produced with Comfy UI, using the different 14B1 2.2 SDV models, namely the BF16, FP8, and GUF Q4, as well as an extended 20-second FP8 SDV video. Then we'll take a look at my two base SDV modified workflows, one for using the BF16 or FP8 models and the second for using the GUF models. We'll go through the easy workflow setup and then get straight into the key settings for the workflows, as well as a few tips thrown in, so you can just get straight on with generating talking or singing videos of your own. You should note that I wanted to test the raw demands of the WAN 2.2 SDV model against the capability of a 32GB RTX 5090 GPU. So my base WAN 2.2 SDV workflows don't use a Lightning LoRa or the WAN 2.2 SDV Extend node. For those of you with lower VRAM GPUs and RAM, this could result in out-of-memory issues. If you push your video resolution or video duration above the recommended 77 frames or about 4.8 seconds. I'll leave all the references and links that I cover in this video in the description below. This first comparison generation set compares the results of the BF16, FP8, and the GUF Q4 models. On the screen, you can see the input image, text prompt, as well as the generation details. Let's take a look and listen to the actual generations. They can doubt me, they can hate, but when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate, but when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate, but when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. The generations across all three model variants are actually pretty good. Since they're all based on the 14B Mixture of Experts base model, they all took roughly the same amount of time to generate, even though the size of the models are very different. However, the generation times are noticeably long for a speech-to-video model. The BF16 model on the left used the FP16 text encoder, and the other two used the FP8 text encoder. And although I can see some finer details on the BF16 video, this could also be down to the actual BF16 much larger and higher quality model. There's a consistent problematic video glitch for the first few frames at the start on all the videos, although this could easily be overcome with adding a tiny silence to the beginning of the audio clip and then trimming the video start. The man in all three videos looks a little on the plastic side, but looking back at the actual image, it also has the same plastic look. The slightly blurry teeth are a bit of a letdown in all the videos. The original input image didn't actually show his teeth. The lip sync in all the videos is very good indeed. The overall larger movements are pretty much the same between all the videos, but they each have tiny facial expressions and movements that are unique. In the text prompt, I did ask for a serious facial expression, and they've all followed that prompt instruction well. As to which one I think is the best, I just can't decide, so why don't you let me know in the comments which one you prefer? They can doubt me, they can hate, but when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate, but when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate, but when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. This second comparison generation set again compares the results of the BF16, FP8, and the GUF Q4 models. 
On the screen, you can see the input image text prompt as well as the generation details. Let's take a look and listen to the actual generations. They can doubt me, they can hate. But when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate. But when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate. But when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. Again, I think the generations across all three model variants are actually pretty good. The BF16 model on the left used the FP16 text encoder, and the other two used the FP8 text encoder. However, on this occasion, I'm struggling to see any finer details on the BF16 video. Again, there's the consistent problematic video glitch for the first few frames at the start on all the videos, which could easily be overcome with adding a tiny silence to the beginning of the audio clip, and then trimming the video start. The woman in all three videos does look a little less plastic than the previous comparison, but is in line with the slight plastic look of the input image. In this comparison, her teeth are mostly very good in all the videos. The original input image did actually show a tiny bit of her top and bottom rows of teeth, so not sure if that made the improvement compared to his teeth in the first comparison. The lip sync in all the videos is pretty much spot on. The overall larger movements as well as the smaller facial expressions and eye movements are very similar across all the videos. What I think is really good is the very realistic movement of her throat and neck muscles, skin and bones, as well as a correctly timed inflating of her chest as she inhales in before emphasizing some key phrases in the speech. In the text prompt again, I asked for a serious facial expression, and not only did all the videos follow that prompt instruction well, but the instruction also flowed very well into her serious facial expressions and movements as she spoke, especially when she said the word hate. As to which one I think is the best, I just don't know. Although I am on this occasion leaning towards the BF16 video, let me know in the comments which one you prefer. They can doubt me, they can hate. But when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate. But when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. They can doubt me, they can hate. But when that bell rings, all that matters is what's inside. I'm sure you noticed that all the videos in the previous comparison sets were only five seconds long. I tested longer generations originally, using the same settings as the five second videos, but the clarity and sharpness of the video dropped off. Also, VRAM consumption jumped significantly with load pushed into slower RAM, so they just took a very long time to generate. A 20-second long single video took over 53 minutes, which is exponentially longer than generating four separate five-second videos totaling 20 seconds, which would take a total time of about 28 minutes. To be fair, I'm sure I could probably improve the video quality and sharpness by tweaking some settings but waiting 53 minutes to test each tweak is just too much time to waste. If I wanted to generate longer videos as long as the quality was acceptable, I would look to test an optimized GUF workflow that used the Lightning LoRa and WAN 2.2 S2V Extend node with 77 frames chunking. On the screen, you can see the input image text prompt as well as the generation details. Let's take a look and listen to the actual 20 second long generation. And second of all, these people don't dream about being rich. They dream about being able to watch their kids swim in a pool without worrying they'll have to have a hysterectomy at the age of 20. I want you to think real hard about what your spine is worth, Mr. Walker. To be fair, apart from the consistent glitch at the start of the video and lack of sharpness, the other aspects of the video are actually pretty good, including the lip sync and movements. Let's move on to the workflows. I have two separate base 1 2.2 S2V workflows, one for using the 14B BF16 or FP8 models, and one for using the 14B GUF models. I've modified them quite a bit to both simplify and improve them, as well as exclude the Lightning LoRa and use of the WAN 2.2 S2V Extend node. The first thing we need to do is download the workflow that we want to use. Let's download the non-GUF 14B workflow. After we click the link in the description, we're taken to the workflow page. If we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we can see both WAN 2.2 S2V 14B file attachments. We want the non-GUF 14B workflow, so we'll click the file link. We'll save the workflow in our Comfy UI Workflows folder.
Next, we'll need to set up the workflow with all the required models and custom nodes. We'll open ComfyUI. Make sure to update ComfyUI to the latest version for full WAN 2.2 compatibility and any fixes. If you're running the ComfyUI desktop version, this will be done automatically. We'll open the 14B S2V workflow that we just downloaded. If a missing models or missing nodes message pops up, we can just ignore and close them. I've added a custom note at the start of each workflow to make it super easy to grab everything you need to make the workflow work and run without errors. We first need to download the required models. You can choose either the smaller FP8 model or the larger BF16 model, depending on the size of your GPU VRAM and preference. Let's choose the FP8 model. We'll click the direct download link for the FP8 model. We'll save this model in our ComfyUI Diffusion Models folder. Note that if you're using the GUF workflow, the models get saved in the UNET folder instead of the Diffusion Models folder. Now we need to download the audio encoder. We'll click the direct download link and save the file in our ComfyUI audio encoders folder. If for some reason you don't have an audio encoders folder, then you can just create it manually until updates of ComfyUI are rolled out to automatically create it. Now we need to download the text encoder. We have a choice of the smaller FP8 or the larger FP16. We'll choose the FP8. We'll click the direct download link and save the file in our ComfyUI text encoders folder. Moving down to the VAE. The WAN 2.214B models use the WAN 2.1 VAE. We'll click the direct download link for the WAN 2.1 VAE and save the file in our ComfyUI VAE folder. The last thing we need to do is install any required custom nodes via the ComfyUI Manager. For this workflow, as you can see, we need to install the ComfyUI Video Helper Suite custom node. For the GUF workflow, you'll also need to install the ComfyUI GUF custom node. We'll click ComfyUI Manager, select Custom Nodes Manager. In the search box, we'll type in Video Helper. We can see the ComfyUI Video Helper Suite custom node shown in the results. We'll click Install, then choose Latest. The custom node will install, and then we'll need to restart ComfyUI. Once ComfyUI restarts, if we open the same 14B S2V workflow again, we can see that we no longer get any missing models or missing nodes messages popping up. Let's run through some of the key settings as well as a few tips for the workflows. We'll use the 14B S2V workflow as the starting point and jump over to the GUF S2V workflow where it differs. Let's start with the Load Models group. The 14B S2V workflow is set up with a default use of the FP8 model and FP8 model weight type, so if you want to use the BF16 model then just select it in the top node, and for the BF16 weight type you may want to select default for FP16. For the text encoder in the second node, it's set up with the default of FP8, so if you want to use the FP16 text encoder, regardless of whether you're using the BF16 or FP8 model, you can just select it here. In the last two nodes, these are the VAE and audio encoder that we downloaded earlier. Moving over to the input image and reference image group. The first load audio node is where we upload the audio that we want to use. Just click choose file to upload and select your audio file. A variety of formats are acceptable, but I just tend to use a high quality MP3 format. A bit of audio file preparation is useful before uploading the file. If you're looking to produce a 5-second video, then it's best to make sure your audio is exactly 5 seconds in duration. When you do upload your audio, the duration will be shown in the node, which is a very important number to know to calculate your video frame number later. Unfortunately, I've frequently found that the number shown in this node is less than the actual audio length. It's better to go to the properties of your source audio file to check and use that audio duration number. If you set your video frame number too low, the video will abruptly end before the audio finishes. The load image node below is where we just upload our input image. Just click choose file to upload and select your image. 
The dimensions and quality of your input image will influence your resulting video, so it's best to not only use a high-quality image, but also one that's the same dimensions as your desired video resolution. If the image and video sizes are different, then the workflow will go through the additional step of editing your image size, which just adds additional time and imprecision to your resulting video. Moving over to the prompts group. The top positive prompt just needs to be short and to the point to describe any facial expression that you may want your character to have, as well as any specific direction for the character. The negative prompt is the default Chinese one and tends to work well, Moving over to the Create Video group. This is the heart of the workflow where all the encoding, latent video creation, and decoding takes place. In the WAN Sound Image to Video node, we set the width and height of the video that we want, which should be in line with the dimensions of the input image. Then we need to calculate the number of frames. In this workflow, the frame rate, as we will see later on, is set to 16 FPS. So to calculate the total number of video frames, we just multiply the duration in seconds of our audio, for example 5 seconds, by the video frame rate of 16 in this case to give us 80. We need to add an extra frame to make it 81, which is the number we input for the frame length. In the K-Sampler node, the recommended default steps, CFG and Sampler have been set, but you can play around with these to tweak your video result. Moving over to the Output Video group. This is where we're using the Video Helper Suite custom node that we installed earlier. The frame rate is set at the WAN 2.2, 14B recommendation of 16 FPS, which as we saw earlier works in conjunction with the total frame number for the length of our desired video output. The generated videos are set to save in MP4 format. Let's quickly switch over to the 14B GUF SDV workflow. It's pretty much identical to the previous workflow, except that it uses the additional ComfyUI GUF custom node, and the chosen GUF model is selected in the Unit Loader node. That pretty much rounds off all the key points and tips for the workflows. Anyway, hope you found this video helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.